In this video, I'm going to show you how to paint this simple acrylic sunset. The first thing we use is a sponge, and we apply white to the center of our canvas. I already have my paint laid out. I'm using white, a warm yellow, and magenta. Those are going to be the colors I use for the highlight. The reason I'm using a sponge is that I like the texture it gives me. I like how it feels kind of foggy um, and misty. And I imagine that this uh, sunset is happening by a lake, so I could see a little bit of fog or mist being in the air. So I'm just using the brush and gently tapping around the white now. There's not too much yellow left on my sponge. I've gotten most of it off on the canvas, so I'm using just the little bit that's left on there to warm my yellow up, to warm that sun up. I'm going back in and just applying a little bit more around the edges. I'm going to cover pretty much my entire canvas with yellow. Then I'm going to add the red in after. The reason we don't add the red directly to the canvas is that we want a little bit of yellow to, to shine through in the red. And that will help make our sunset transition uh, even more smooth. So you'll see that I'm going to go right to the top and right to the bottom with the yellow. I like to use a kitchen sponge. You can buy little sponges at art stores that have uh, stick handles on them, but I just don't find that those work as well. I like to apply different pressure when I'm, when I'm using a sponge. And here you can see I'm actually rubbing the sponge against the canvas just to get that layer of yellow down. Uh, but when I'm using a sponge, I like to have it in my hand and I like to be able to squeeze it if I need to and change the angle of it if I'm getting a bit of a sharp edge. And I just don't feel like I, I get that when I'm using the art store sponges that you can buy. So I just like to use a plain old kitchen sponge. You can get sponges that have very fine uh, holes in them. You can get sponges with very thick holes in them. Either one is good. Your texture that you get with the sponge is going to be a reflection of the kind of sponge you use. So I prefer, especially for a sunset, I prefer the sponges that are soft with very small holes. Um, they just give me a nice, uh, a nice gradient transition. So now you can see I'm starting to add in the magenta. I start at the top and I make sure that I get most of the magenta off of my sponge when I'm on the top. Now my yellow paint is still slightly damp so I will be picking up just a little bit of yellow paint as I go and I want that. I want to do that. The reason is that I do want there to be a slight blend. So not only am I creating a transition for the sunset by having a thinner layer of paint, a thinner layer of that sponge paint, but I'm also creating it because the magenta is getting slightly more orange as I move into the center here. I like to create a little bit of a dark uh, frame around my sun here. So you'll see that I'm going to put red all the way around on the bottom, top, and even along the edges just a little bit. And uh, for me, that helps compositionally. It helps to pull my eye into the center of the image. Really makes that center the focal point. You see a lot of Instagram filters do the same thing. They darken the edges and they brighten the center and that's just to call attention to whatever it is that's being, uh, being focused on in the middle. So I'm doing the same kind of thing here with my composition. Now you can see I'm just getting my final touches here. I'm blending that magenta into the yellow, um, bringing it up into the sun just a little bit, just with the sponge that has barely any paint on it. Okay, so now it's time to add our grass. So I'm starting with a thick layer of paint at the bottom. Um, and I'm saying thick because I am using, you can, you can see the paint on there. I want this paint to stay wet for at least a couple of minutes here. What I'm going to do is use my fan brush to pull little fluffs of grass up from there. So I need that paint to be wet in order to do that. You can already see it starting to dry on the one side there. I didn't get, uh, I didn't get that much grass there. So I'm going to have to go back in and reapply just a little bit of paint to be able to pull that grass up. 
Now the, the motion that I'm doing with my brush, it very much is a flick. I'm just letting the bristles barely touch the black paint and then I'm flicking my wrist up and I'm doing it at angles so that some blades of grass are going left, some are going right, some are going straight. I want it to feel very organic. Some of them are long, some of them are short. Um, I don't want to go straight up with all of the brush strokes. That would make for kind of a boring composition. When you see grass in the real world, it usually isn't growing straight up and down, right? It's usually growing at a little bit of an angle. And the same thing applies for these, uh, these tall, I don't know what they are, wheat-like uh, things that you see when you look at um, by, by a creek, by a, a pond, by a lake. They seem to grow in kind of marshy climates. Um, and they too will be at angles, and they're not all going to be at the same angle. Some of them are going to have a much more severe bend to them, some of them will go left, some will go right. Uh, most of mine are going to be pointing in the right direction. And I'm just doing that because I imagine that these, all of these pieces of grass are growing up in the same climate, so they're experiencing the same wind, they're experiencing the same amount of, of rain and sun, and the likelihood of them mostly pointing in the same direction is pretty high, so that's why most of my stems are going to be pointing uh, to the right, but I don't want all of them to be pointing to the right. So I am going to have a couple that are pointing, pointing to the left just to give the painting a little bit more of a dynamic composition. Again, if these, if these were going straight up and down, it would look wrong. It would not look like a realistic um, grassy marsh. It would it would not feel real at all. Very rarely do you see something in nature, whether it's a flower, or even a tree, go straight up and down um, at a, you know, forming a 90 degree angle with the ground. Usually there's a little bit of a bend to even a tree, but especially to something like a flower or wheat or something that has a, a smaller shaft and then a heavier head to it. The likelihood of that bending in the wind is very high. And even bending just when there's no wind is quite high. So I'm adding in these little lines here. I'm doing this first. I'm kind of mapping out my composition as I go. I'm taking this one right up into the sun. It's kind of going to be the star of the show. Um, there's going to be a few that stand out more than others. Some of these are leading actors and some of them are supporting actors. And you want to make sure that, that you distribute them in a way that feels organic. So I'm not going to have you know, three really tall, really prominent um, of these plants, you know, three inches apart from each other, perfectly aligned at the bottom. I'm going to have clusters. I'm going to give some some negative space where there's, where there's not these tall ones. Um, and that will help to make the composition a little bit more dynamic too. Now, when it comes to painting the tops of these, it's very simple. Um, I just dab a small paintbrush. I just dab paint on the top. Um, and I do it on either side of the shaft that I have painted in. Sometimes you'll even see I start above the shaft and, and uh, take them down um, from there. If I look at if I look at my what I've painted and decide that I want my plant to be even taller than the map I've given myself, I can just do that by starting the the seeds up higher and then having them come down into the stem. So this is just simply tapping, tap tap tap. Tap, tap, tap. Very, very uh, peaceful. It's a very peaceful painting. I really enjoy, I, I actually never really enjoyed painting sunsets until I started teaching. Um, and now that I'm teaching, I have a lot of students very interested in sunsets, so I've gotten into them and I quite enjoy them. Um, I like that they're usually kind of fast, um, and I actually really enjoy the detail work on them. There is detail work, but it's not the same kind of detail work that you would do in like an animal portrait or something like that, or, or a drawing of a person. It's a lot more forgiving uh, with the detail, and I really like that. And I like that I can just put these things wherever I want. I'm making this up as I go. I'm not looking at a picture. I'm just putting them wherever I feel like they need to be, and I, and I like that freedom as well. And there's just something nice about the silhouette. A black silhouette against a, a vibrant sky is just a very pleasing thing to look at and it's a very enjoyable thing to paint. So I'm really getting into sunsets. Now this painting took me about 12 minutes to do from start to finish. Um, it's not a terribly uh, time-consuming painting, but if you don't have painting experience, it would take you, I would say, at least half an hour to get this, uh, to get this feeling good. One thing you want to be careful of is just not to overdo it. 
it's very easy to get carried away and to put a little bit too much uh, blades of grass in there or make your um, make your main pieces of grass go up a little bit too high or throw too many of those in there. It's also very easy to overdo the background. If you're trying this on your own and you're trying to use the sponge and you accidentally get a little bit of red in your yellow where it shouldn't be, what you want to do is, is probably just wait for it to dry and come back to it. Um, it's very hard to cover up a color like magenta, especially if you're using yellow. Yellow tends to be a very transparent color and magenta is an incredibly bold color. And uh, magenta goes a long way when it comes to painting. So just a little tiny bit of magenta can dominate a color. So it is very easy to, to go a little bit too far with the background. And if that happens, just take a break and come back, either that or lean into it. Create a cloud, like lean into that little bit of paint that you, that you put in the wrong spot rather than trying to fix it. Um, what I find when I'm, when I'm teaching especially is that uh, students try to fix mistakes as they go, which, which is natural, but more often than not, it just turns into an even larger mistake. But if you can lean into it uh, and use that mistake to your advantage, you can just make it a beautiful part of your painting. I think it was Bob Ross who said mistakes were happy accidents. I don't think that that, that is wrong. Somebody said that. And there you have it. There is our sunset. So if you give this a try, please tag me. Um, my Instagram account is creations by Kendra with underscores in between the words. And on Facebook, you can find me at creations by Kendra as well. I would love to see how your artwork turns out. I hope you enjoyed this painting tutorial. Happy painting. <laughs>